Hello, welcome to another video. We are going to solve a differential equation for the first time on this channel. And there are four things I would like you to always identify before you even start solving a differential equation. And just by looking at it, you could tell how many times y was differentiated. Okay, it was differentiated just once. That's why we have y prime. So if y was differentiated just once, then you call this differential equation a first order differential equation. So let's quickly write the characteristics. It is first order. Okay, see, easy to identify, easy to recognize. The next thing you want to ask yourself is, if I look at the y, is there any y there? Yes. So, if there is y, what is the, the exponent on y? What's happening to y? Is y just standing there or there's something bugging y so that y is not just y? So, this is a scalar, so this is not a problem. The question is, is this y squared or square root of y or y raised to some rational exponent? No. Okay? It is just y. So, because y is standing by itself, it is a linear differential equation. That's the second thing. It's linear. Okay, and the reason is because y has a power of 1. You see that? Well, I can write it this way because it looks like this. But the exponent on y, the y exponent, let's put it that way, makes it linear. This is the next important thing. How many variables do you have? Well, we cannot tell. And the other question also we cannot answer until we rewrite this expression. So remember, you cannot solve this the way it is. You have to rewrite y prime as dy dx. So let's rewrite this problem. We're going to have this to be dy dx minus 3y is equal to 0. Mm. So now, you have y and x, you have no other variable, and when you have the situation where there is one independent variable and one dependent variable, in fact, we don't care about this, we care about how many d's do we have, is it dx or dx and dy? Because it's just one, you say it is an ordinary differential equation. And that's the only type of differential equation we'll be dealing with at this level, ordinary differential equations. Okay, so this is ordinary. I'm going to write that as the main characteristic. This is ordinary, ordinary differential equations. Okay, so it's important that that's, you understand why it is called ordinary differential equations. There is only one independent variable. So you're taking derivatives or you're integrating with all, with respect to only one variable, not two and not three. And one more thing, you can see that after the problem, you're given some values. They gave you, okay, if you evaluate y when x is equal to zero, the value of y is going to be negative one. So they gave you some extra information so you can finally solve it. This is what you call an initial value problem because they gave you the initial value of x and the initial value of y. So let's call this initial value problem. So we're going to call this initial value. Okay, um, this is just by the way so you can see some clarity in what we're doing. So remember, because sometimes the strategy you're going to adopt in solving depends on whether you're dealing with a linear equation or whether you're dealing with a first order equation or a second order equation, whether linear or nonlinear. You have to be able to state that. And what we need to do now is the last thing. You want to ask yourself, can I separate this equation in such a way that it looks like this, which is the final thing, which is from here. If I can write dy dx and move everything else to the other side so that I have it to be 3y, then I can call this a separable linear equation. Okay? How do I know it's separable? Because the general form of a separable linear equation is this form. It has to look like this. dy dx 
has to be equal to the product of two functions, a function of x and a function of y. I'm going to write it this way. So one of them has to be a function of x, the other has to be a function of y. Now if you look at this, this is what you call a separable linear equation and is this, does this look like this? Yes, because we could say that f of x is 3 and g of y is y. So the fourth characteristic or the fifth one is that this is a separable linear equation. This is separable, separable linear equation. Okay, remember this is important. Let me take this off. It is important to be able to write it this way so you can solve it using this strategy. Okay, now that we've got this, let's solve this. So what you want to do is you want to multiply both sides by dx because you don't want dy and dx to be on the same side. So if we multiply both sides by dx, we're going to get dy equals 3y dx. But you now want the y to not be around dx. You want to move this y away. Should you take the 3 along? No, just take just the y because everything else we can deal with with respect to x. So if we take this y over here, you're going to notice that you get 1 over y dy will be equal to 3 dx. Now something else I want to state. This is what you can integrate. You could not integrate this. You can't put the integral sign here. Okay? You cannot put the integral sign here. You can only put the integral sign beside a differential. So this is what you call a differential. A differential is a, a function that is multiplied by d dx or multiplied by dy. Okay, that's what you have as a differential. And so this is where you can now introduce the integral sign. So here we go. We integrate 1 over y dy. We integrate 3 dx. Because what we're looking for actually is y. Okay, so what do we have? If we integrate 1 over y, we know it's always the natural log of y. Should I put the absolute value sign? Well, some people do, some people don't, okay? What I will tell you is, whether you do or you don't, it doesn't matter, okay? But you should, let's just put it for now, and then I will explain to you, then you can make up your mind. Now, let's go here. If we do this, um, this is gonna be the integral of three, that's um, three x. And then remember, every time you do an integration, you do plus C. There you go. Now, we're done with differential equation, all the strategies, we're done with this. You just need to be able to, remember we're not looking for the natural log of the absolute value of Y. We're looking for Y. Y needs to be isolated if possible, okay? So, if we do that, what do we do? To get rid of natural log, we take the E of both sides. So, it's the natural log of the absolute value of Y e to the 3x plus c. Remember to put plus c only on the right. Don't put plus c on both sides. I know that we integrated both sides, but whether you put a c here or put a c here, remember you can move the c to the other side. So don't waste your time adding a c after you take the integral here, because that c can go here, and then you have c1 plus c2, which ultimately will still become c. Even the c, we still have to change it into something else eventually. So what do we have here? Um, this is just going to be the absolute value of y is going to be e to the 3x multiplied by e to the c. Okay, we don't want to leave this like that. We want to rewrite it this way. So that is e to the c and we can bring this e to the c to the front. What does absolute value mean? It means plus or minus. So see what this is going to become. You can now rewrite this and say y will be plus or minus. You have, we can bring this e to the c forward, e to the c, and then we have e to the 3x. This should be your final answer, but this doesn't look nice because this is a constant. This is a constant, okay? And remember, this c is an arbitrary constant. We could replace this entire expression with another letter, which I like to use. I like to use the letter a. 
and then this is e to the 3x. So you have y equals a e to the 3x. Now, a quick question. What is a? Well, a has some options. a could be, look, a could be equal to plus e to the c. That's an option. Or a could be negative e to the c. There's one more option, which you should always look out for when you solve a differential equation. Because usually the answer doesn't pop up. You have to go check. Is it possible that y equals zero is a solution to this? What if, because nobody's gonna tell us, why is y equals zero not showing up? Because look, e to the three x can never be zero. And because it can never be zero, we always overlook it. So you go here and you go, um, if the original y was zero, let's see if it's gonna work. Suppose, just in your head, I'm gonna erase this. Suppose y equals zero. What is the first derivative? It's still zero. So if I go plug these two into the original function, I'm gonna get zero minus three times zero equals zero. Is that true? Zero minus zero equals zero? Yes. So it means y equals zero is a solution. So, and if you want this to be equal to zero, since this cannot be zero, a can also be zero. Because if a is zero, then you're gonna have y equals zero times this, we could get zero. So these are the three possible um, configurations you can have for a. So let's get rid of this and use these initial values to find what a could be in this particular case. But what we have right now is what you call the general solution, general. So the initial values that we have are y evaluated at x equals zero is gonna give you negative one. All we have to do is plug these values in and then we get what a is, that's the purpose. So here, we know that y is gonna be negative one and we don't know what a is, but we know we're gonna have e to the three times x is zero. This leads us to a times e to the zero, which is the same thing as a times one. So it means negative one equals a and therefore we can say that the solution to this because now we have an initial value problem they've narrowed down our choices for a we know that now we have y is equal to what is a negative one so we replace this with negative one and then we have e to the three x this is the solution to the initial value problem this is the general solution, no matter what the initial value is. I hope you learned something in this video. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.